Blessed be the name of the Lord. We thank Him. You woke up today. Thank Him. You are alive. Even if you are sick, thank Him. He has given you life still. Life, though, is better than a dead lion. So, no matter the extent of your weakness or sickness, thank Him first of all because you are alive. And better things are coming your way. Today, we are going to read Genesis chapter 10, verse 8 and 9. Genesis 10, verse 8 and verse 9. Kosh begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore it is said, like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Nimrod was a hunter. But he did what? He began to be a mighty man on the earth. Strange. He was born like every other person. He went into hunting as it were, the meanest of jobs. Till today we see hunters as, well, way down there. And anyway, the local hunter will look almost always weird or strange and things like that and seems to be talking to dogs and things like, you know, abnormal situations, not really looking human. That was Nimrod, but he began to be a mighty man on the earth by the prowess of what he had put into hunting. I like this example. It tells you that even at the lowest states of life, you can come up with the best of things. You can become the best of the best, and everybody would wonder at you. But that was Nimrod. Wonderful person. I thank God for him, and I thank God for the example that he put up for us. He didn't end up being only a mighty man on the earth. But he became a mighty hunter before the Lord. How are you handling the talent that God gave to you? That's the question. How have you handled the abilities that God has given to you? You look at them as so mean. I wish I was the other one. I wish I was doing the other thing. I w oh, God. We just keep pushing. Do we even think about how these people came through? So many of us own Dell computers, Dell laptops, and Dell this, Dell that. That guy just started by selling laptops. And finally decided to sell the laptops in his name. Salesman, just ordinary salesman. Working for somebody. And he will go from door to door selling. And finally decided he would sell in his name and sold in his name, Dell. And then got someone to manufacture computers for him in his own name. Now is a different story. As it were, the rest is history. There are too many people. You have this little boy now, currently, nine year old. What does he do? He analyzes cartoons. You are the one that bothered to put up cartoons on the internet. And then his only work is to do the analysis and presentation of them. That boy, multi-millionaire. Nine year old. How many of you don't look at those cartoons? How many of you don't even don't listen to its analysis before you ask your children to watch those cartoons? What has he done? The other one just presents toys. Whoever is manufacturing toys is manufacturing, and all he does is present the toys. Multimillionaire. What am I saying? There is nothing like a mean thing if you put in your effort to do it sincerely. Do it beyond where everybody else is stopping. It's just like the first book that we have today. Was well, that guy the first person who ever did a thing like that? No. There was one fellow in two years before him who had tried the thing in Malaysia and just thought that the thing was useless and left it off. And this other guy sat in his university hostel, the dormitory, and just look for ways to communicate with his friends, even those who were in class and he was in the dormitory, not even attending classes. Drop out, as it were. And then by the time he was able to establish it, no equipment except the telephone like anybody else had. 
Today, what is the story of Facebook? Billions. Young boy. What are you doing with the talents that God gave to you? The thing looks to you like two men. There's this young man from Kenya. In the primary school, in his last year in the primary school, his father bought a computer. And he heard how much the father talked about how much he bought the computer, new laptop. And he had heard his teacher in school complaining about not being able to get a laptop that he wanted to get. And he came to his teacher and said, the father just brought in a grand laptop and wants to sell it. This is how much he wants to sell it. If he has the money for it, he will bring it. And the teacher gave him the money. He came, took the father's laptop and took it to the teacher. And then the father comes back later and looks for his laptop and he has not found it. What happened? He said he sold it to the teacher. But you sold my laptop. No. The father was almost going berserk when he told him how much he sold the laptop. And the man said, and the teacher paid that money. He said, here is the money. He had sold the laptop at almost twice the price the father bought. The father couldn't complain. He went to buy another one. The boy promptly sold the next one. The man said, what kind of child is this? He now bought two. Gave him one. Say, if you want to sell your own, you can sell. He sold the two. By his last years in the secondary school, he had employed 50 people. By the time he was 18, he had employed 2,000 people. He had gone to Dubai to buy a house and moved his parents and siblings to Dubai, where he decided to keep his headquarters at 18. Did he come up with any technology? Did he have a factory somewhere? He would sit down, no. If I had money to do this, which money did he have? Primary school boy just took his father's laptop to sell. There is a talent in you that you have refused to look at. There is something with you that can change everything about your life and your entire community. But what is holding you back? You are looking for the big things. You are looking for the money to go and start with. You look for this. You look for that. You, look, you just create all manner of stupid things inside your head. Cut them off. Nimrod, ordinary hunter, began to be a mighty man in the earth. Not only that, he became a mighty hunter before the Lord. What are you doing? How are you handling the thing that God gave to you? There are too many examples in this world. They are replicated here and there, everywhere, around you. You go into Facebook, go into this, go into that. If those people decided to function like you, would we have had such facilities? You sit down and complain. I'm in a third world country. The facilities are not there. What facility do you need to analyze toys? Nothing. And it's not as if the toy is brought to you. You see it on the internet and do the analysis. Nine-year-old boy. And you are there as an adult, still complaining. I wish I had the facility. But every day you look at the thing so that you see what, is, what the boy said. They talk about cartoon. You want to see what that boy said. Can't you come up with what God had given to you? And start to become a mighty man on the earth. And become mighty in that aspect before the Lord. I've just hinted at just a few examples. Check your life, man. There is something in there. Lord, I pray that you open the eyes of my brothers and sisters. To see the things we have put down continually. The things we have refused to acknowledge. To bring forth those things. That our lives may be better. We sit down and complain every day. Whereas within us, you have given everything that would have made us great men upon this earth. Father, open eyes today and let destinies come through. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.